Hi, for today's Mental Health Monday, I think I'll shake things up a little bit and do something different. Normally, I do my makeup whenever I talk about mental health, but today I'm going to do my nails. So today's topic is, what do you do or how do you deal with being unsatisfied about where you are in life if you're mentally ill or you've had a history of trauma? A lot of us trauma survivors, we had plans for our lives. We want to go to college or maybe get married and have kids or travel or do something else. We had dreams and hopes and goals. Trauma kept us from staying on the path we planned out for ourselves and from just living life as a normal person. And this is really hard because a lot of us are very smart and talented and of course we want to use our gifts out in the world to live a full and happy life maybe even make the world a better place so my, my birthday was yesterday i turned 38 in two years i'll be 40 and i didn't really feel this birthday as heavily as i did other birthdays i'm more at peace with it i think but i still am aware that i'm fast approaching 40 and i'm still not where i want to be in life um and I'm not really sad about it, I think, um, but I am unhappy with it. So, um, how, how do I deal with this? Well, the first thing is I, I am gentle with myself. I tell myself, it's not your fault that you have trauma. You are working on fixing things and healing yourself. You do have a plan for your life. You do... Uh, you do try to meet yourself where you are, and you're aware that what happened to you isn't your fault, so don't beat yourself up. I tell myself that I'm lucky to be alive, because um, there were times in my life where, you know, I could have passed away at a young age. Um, so, you know, I've made it pretty far, and I'm also not in amazing health, but fairly decent help for considering everything I've been through and considering how much brain damage I have. Um, I've also accomplished a few things, which makes me happy because I am someone who tries and I think trying is better than not trying at all. I, um, I tell myself, you know, like, you're still making plans for your future, which means that you do believe you, you can have a future. And you're not just wasting your life. It's not a waste of a life to heal yourself. It's always valuable to heal yourself. I also try to remind myself that I am a lot stronger than I thought I was. A lot more resourceful. Um, I don't ever think anyone should be traumatized or that they deserve to be traumatized. I try to look at it as living with trauma has sort of shown me what I can accomplish, even while living in under pretty hard and unfair circumstances. So this is SC Trophy Wife. I'm not gonna, gonna do an accent finger on the fourth finger. So I'm leaving that there for now. Um, it helps a lot to be really mindful and compassionate to yourself when you're thinking about not living the life you planned for yourself. When I was in school, I was always the kid who was really gifted and extremely bright. So I was always at the top of my class, or I was, I was in the honors class, um, without fail. When I was in eighth grade, I was in the school orchestra, I played violin. And when I was in high school, I was learning Spanish enough to kind of be semi-fluent in it. And um, I was always just involved in everything. I was class president in seventh grade. 
I was secretary of the, Span of the science club. I was in the honor society. Um, just a, pretty much an overachiever. And I think when you're living with trauma as an overachiever or as a gifted kid, it can be extremely hard because you know what you're capable of and no one knows that better than you do. So you always say to yourself, you know, what is wrong with me? Why can't I just be who I was before? Why can't I just get it together and just be that really smart, really talented, sort of nothing nothing ever comes hard to me type, type of person? But trauma changes you in a lot of ways. You're not the person you were before. And it's not your fault. It can be really unfair. But what I tell myself, now that I know that it can be so unfair, life in general and just living with trauma that you can give yourself, is that it's a chance to be fair to yourself. And the way to be fair to yourself is to acknowledge that you are not as well as you could be. And because you're not as well as you could be, things that other people can do are going to be harder for you. And it would be unfair to yourself to hold yourself to other people's standards because they're not you and they haven't suffered the way you've suffered. They haven't gone through the same challenges and trials that you've been through. The same hardships. I'm also really mindful of the fact that I'm not happy where I am. But I tell myself, what does this mean really? If you're not happy with where you are. Um... What do you want to change? And in some ways, it's kind of empowering. Because when I was a kid, my abusers controlled my life. Now that I'm grown up, I can control my own life. And that feels very freeing. a one-handed job not a pro job but it's okay all right i think acknowledging that you're still alive and this is your life and you're pretty much an amazing person lets you know that it's not over for you and once you know that, you can do whatever you want. You can spend your life healing. You can help other people. You can just spend your life doing what you want, whether that's just indulging your inner child or um, or perhaps um, if you like learning new things, just learning whatever fascinates you i like museums and one thing one thing i want to do is travel and visit as many museums as i possibly can i think so much of coping with being unhappy about where you are in life and about possible time wasted is that you never wanted us for yourself but I think that if you see healing as self-care, in some ways, it's healing is a necessary work. It's actually mental health care. But it can also be self-care because finally, for once in your life, someone is focused on yourself. You're focused on yourself. And that's such an amazing gift because you know what you need and want more than anyone else does. 
And remember that your opinion of yourself matters, too. And if you think that you healing yourself is worth it, then it is worth it. One thing you're going to have to do is learn to not judge yourself by other people's standards. If you were raised by a narcissist or someone who wanted you to do the impossible, they wanted to make you they wanted to make you make them look good, that's going to make you think you always have to work for someone else's approval, but don't forget about your own approval. What is it about yourself that you think is valuable? And there's a lot that's valuable about you. You have many gifts, and you and the world can benefit from those gifts. Finish off with a top coat. So, um, I'm still very aware that I have a lot of work to do in myself, but I'm also proud of myself for how far I've come. I found, I found all kinds of genius ways to look after myself and to stay alive. And I think that's really, that's really amazing. It's truly extraordinary. So I hope this video helped you, and I hope that it helped change the way you think about yourself and to be a little bit more at peace with not accomplishing your goals or not being the person you thought you'd be. You're going to be so many different versions of yourself. You always have the power to change. And it's okay to just look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, I survived, and that's good enough for me today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and any advice you have for people who are unhappy with their lives or where they are.